After giving up his powers to save the world, Danny Rand is living a regular life, believing that he's seen the last of the Iron Fist. However, when the evil demons begin to attack cities from all around the world, a mysterious newcomer, donning a familiar mask, shows up with hands blazing with the chi of Shao La the Undying. Last year's Heart of the Dragon miniseries took big swings with the Iron Fist lore, and despite the character Danny Rand having to give up the mantle, Alyssa Wong is able to fill in the void properly with the debut of a new Iron Fist. Now in recent years, the character of Iron Fist has not been getting the love that he deserves, though thanks to the Marvel's Netflix series. Which, you know, to be fair, from the perspective of, of a newcomer to comics, I can totally understand your, your interpretation into getting into the character. That show is really fucking bad. <laughs> However, putting that aside and not letting the mistakes of the show taint your perception, Iron Fist is actually a pretty cool character. Though I will say that I think the mythos surrounding Daddy Ran is way cooler than the actual character. Though it's not to say that Daddy Ran sucks or anything, but for me personally, I can't help but feel the bland vibe or sense whenever it comes to Danny. Almost as if the character needed something to spice things up. Therefore, when the news broke out that a new series was going to feature a new Iron Fist, one who was actually Asian, I was intrigued. But I also felt bad for those, you know, you know, who were Danny Rand fans. It's never fun to see a character who you love get scooped off to the side. But fortunately for everyone here, new fans and old, y'all will appreciate this. Because Alyssa Wong does the characters and the mythos justice. For anyone who cared for Danny Rand as a character, they'll be quite pleased to see him still as a main character. It's apparent that Wong has no interest in rewriting the history of the Iron Fist, because Danny Rand plays a substantial part in the book. And while he's as surprised as we are to see a new Iron Fist, you can see that he has a role to play here. He's not just some ex-Iron Fist, but he's a guy with knowledge about fighting and harnessing the power. He's not quite a mentor yet, but Wong writes him in a way that makes it seem like the concept could be a natural fit. So yeah, Danny Rand fans, no need to worry. Now, prior to the book's release, Marvel's been pretty cagey about the new Iron Fist's identity ever since they announced the run. But fortunately, I was quite relieved that the book didn't prolong the identity mystery like a Bendis book would, because it turns out that the new Iron Fist is Lin Lee, the Swordmaster from the Agents of Atlas. And not only is Alyssa continuing the Iron Fist story from the Heart of the Dragon, but she's also continuing her work from the Death of Doctor Strange event, specifically the White Fox issue, where Lin was shown getting thrown off a cliff by a demon, along with the destruction of his sword. And so with all that said and done, Alyssa Wong's script is sharply paced. Every moment of the comic grabs your attention and propels the plot in mostly intriguing ways. Now to be honest, there is a lot happening in this first issue, often guided by pages that are stacked with word bubbles. But despite that and the constant shifting of scenes, Wong does a pretty good job with exposition dumps, along with the scene transitioning. However, the scripting can at times feel pretty dense, with word balloons dominating several panels at a time. When it comes to the art, the fast-paced and well-choreographed action needed in any good martial arts comic is brought to life by Michael Yi. Yi was absolutely the right choice for the story. His artwork meshes perfectly with Alyssa's writing and the story's colors. His design for the new Iron Fist suit is great, a cool mix of genuine martial artist and superhero that feels modern yet obviously familiar. Plus, the injuries of the new Iron Fist are detailed and raw, and every time he moves them, readers can easily commiserate with the agony that he, that he must be feeling. Basically, his sharp character designs and solid directing make this for an exciting read. The colors by J. David Ramos are rich and totally perfect for the comic. Rather than take the spotlight, Ramos uses the color to emphasize and shift the reader's mood and attention while leaving the majority of the focus on the artwork and the script. His dark hues enable more serious action to run its course, while the bright light or chi or other magical powers provided provide some sort of hope within the darkness. Iron Fist issue number one is a great debut and honoring the old and the new. It doesn't feel like Danny Rand is being shuffled off to the door. Rather, this feels like a bland of the two, but more importantly, the continuation of two ongoing stories, Danny Rand's as well as the new Iron Fist. The issue gives us a great start, especially since it doesn't play coy with the reader. It gives us the full rundown of who and what the new Iron Fist is, and how he connects with the whole supernatural world of martial arts. Plus, it also lays the groundwork for Danny Rand to play a part in the series in a very natural way. Given the rich history that this new Iron Fist is built upon, we're in for a wild, fantasy-soaked fighting good time. Iron Fist issue number one gets an 8 out of 10.
Our story picks up several months in the past, within the mystical lost city of Kunlun, where Sparrow Yutai, the guardian of Kunlun, is currently in the process of preparing the city for another festival of the rebirth, a ceremony which is put together whenever Shao La comes back to life. But it's here where we learn that it's been some time since the dragon last hatched, and that a lot of these festivals have sort of turned out to be sort of a letdown. Therefore, because of this, the people of Kunlun have been getting nervous, but seemingly that's all about to change, because amidst everyone's training, the doormat egg of Shao La and the Undying starts to crack open. It starts to hatch. Picking up in the present day in New York City, Danny Rand's introducing himself to us, giving us a little recap as to what's been happening in his life, and he tells us if he's no longer the Iron Fist, because in the previous story, Danny had to give up his powers in order to save the world, and so now he's just a guy who knows a lot of kung fu. But fuck you, Danny, because none of that matters, because right now he is currently neck deep in battle against a couple of demons. Plus, if things weren't hard enough, Danny's BFF, Luke Cage, is on the phone, and he's trying to make sense as to what's happening. But Danny tries to assure Luke that he's got this, but it's clear to us that he really doesn't, which by default makes Danny a bad friend for lying. But I digress. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a demon pounces on top of Danny, and just when the end is seemingly nigh, this is where we witness the arrival of the new Iron Fist, as he impales the demon via his fiery green fist. And after a little bit of team up and kicking ass and taking names, Danny wonders as to who his new savior is. But the new Iron Fist lets Danny know that he's just a guy passing through. Now, despite the fact that his costume looks pretty dope, which, you know, let's be real here, folks, it's super badass. The only thing that's clearly missing is actually the most important element that defines an Iron Fist, the Chi of Shao La because the green energy that's glowing around his hands, it's not the same power of an Iron Fist, at least fully. And after they beat up with the last of the demons, Danny notices that the Iron Fist's chi is flickering up and down. But before Danny is sure that the kid is okay, the Iron Fist makes his getaway, leaving Danny in question as to what is even going on. But this is what takes us to a rooftop, where, where we learn a new Iron Fist's identity, and it turns out that it's Lin Lee. And this is where we see the origin story of the new Iron Fist as Lin Lee states that it began with him falling in, into a ravine, though it had more to do so with a demon, an ancient entity that was set free because the spell imprisoning it was broken by the, the death of Doctor Strange. Now Lin Lee, prior to becoming the Iron Fist, he was the Sword Master, and he wielded the sword of Fo Shi, one of the three divine weapons forged in order to prevent Qi Lao, the god of war, from rising and devouring the world. But back when he was fighting the demon alongside his friend White Fox, the demon, she tried to kill White Fox, but Lin Li dove right in front of her, which caused the demon to shatter the divine weapon in the process. The shards of the sword then splintered into Lin Li's hands, hence the pain he feels in his hands today, to which he was immediately thrown into the water below. Now it was during that same moment when Chao La the Undying hatched out of his egg, and by sensing his presence on the shores of Kunlun, the dragon engulfed Lin with its flames, thus rescuing him from certain death. Now Chi Yao, is sealed in three tombs. Each one is protected by the power of a divine weapon. And when Lin Li's father removed the sword of Fo Shi from the skull of Qi Yao, part of the Dark Destroyer's power was released into the world. And due to the sword's destruction, the seals on Qi Lao's three tombs weakened, allowing his horde of demons to escape and attack cities around the world. Following this exposition dump, this is where we see the arrival of Danny Ran, remarking that he should have figured the kid would be brooding on a rooftop because that's just a classic Iron Fist mannerism. Lin Li tries to run off, but Danny tries to stop him, saying that he just wants to talk, but Lin Li is not interested, saying that he's got his own mission at the moment. But Danny's pretty quick, guessing whether his mission has got to do something with the glowing green shards, like the one he saw one of the demons eat, and the ones that are making Lin Li's fists hurt. But Lin Li pushes Danny away, letting him know that he doesn't want or need his help. But in quick kung fu fashion, Danny uses the sleight of hand to take a shard from Lin Lee, telling him that all he wants to do is just have a few answers and ask a few questions, and he'll give the shard back to him. However, Lin Lee becomes angry, and from there he channels the power of the sword of Fu Shi, thus making his fist fiery green, and he attacks Danny. Danny lets him know that although he's no longer an iron fist, he does recognize Lin Lee's moves, which are only taught in Kun Lung, to which he asks if he's from there. But Lin denies it, saying that he's from Shanghai, and after a bit of fighting, Lin's able to take back the stolen shard, and immediately bids him farewell, as he dives from the rooftop, landing into a crowd of people. Danny proceeds to run after him, chasing him through a subway, along the tracks, 
but he ends up losing him to a gateway that leads to Kunlun, a gateway that Danny didn't even know about. Later, as Lin Li arrives through the gateway, entering Kunlun, he is greeted by Mia Min. Now, Lin Li notices the bodies of a number of demons, but Min Li lets him know that they snuck through the gateway while he's on the other side, but that she took care of them. So yeah, you don't need to worry, bro. You're good. And as they walk through the city, Lin Li apologizes to Min, saying that it's all his fault because ever since she rescued him when he washed up on the shore of Kunlun, half dead and kept alive by the, by the Chi of Shao La, demons have been attacking. However, Min is like, sure, perhaps you might have fucked up and quite possibly you might have led some demons to our world. But honestly, dude, demons have been trying to find a way to get in the city for over a millennia, and we've, and we've faced countless threats over the centuries. And so it's not exactly unusual at this point. And as a hopeful thunder to be, Min is always down to kick some demon butt saying she wants to be just like Sparrow Yutai. Arriving at her home, her parents welcome them both and telling them that dinner is almost ready. Afterwards, Lin opens up a puzzle box, containing other shards of the sword and places the shard he found today along with them. Lin Li tells Min that his father and his brother disappeared just before he found out about the sword and that these shards are all that he has left of them. And so if Chi Lao's horde of demons are to get a hold of the shards, not only will they never be able to seal him away, but Chi Lao will also possess the power of a divine weapon. Hence folks, the fancy puzzle box here, which was a present from Doctor Strange, because apparently puzzles are kind of Lin Li's thing. And because of that, he's the only one who can actually open the puzzle box. Later at the dinner table, Min and Lin Li assess the situation regarding the Sword of Fuxi, one of the three sacred weapons that prevent an evil god named Chayo from resurrecting and devouring the world. And with it shattered, with shards of the sword being embedded in Lin Li's fists, causing an unbearable agony, Lin Li's main goal is now to try to collect all the shards and hopes that he will reforge the sword. But as we learn through the discussion, Chi Liao's demons want them as well. Now Min theorizes that maybe it's because of the shards that, that are stuck in his fists is the reason his body is disrupting and energy is flowing, thus leaking spiritual energy. And perhaps that's what drew Shao La to Lin Li to begin with. Tasty spirit energy of Lin Li's sword is bound to attract the supernatural. Now eventually Min Mi's father steps away to the living room, where Lin Li's puzzle box is located, containing the shards of the sword, and he attempts to open it, but it's to no avail, as he sees green electric energy spewing from his hand. And this is where Min Li's mother calls to her husband, asking if the tea is finished brewing. But it's here where we see that Min Mi's father is possessed by a demon of Chi Lao, thus mutating him into a monster. And once he's in monster form, the father responds, telling his wife that he'll be right there. And that, folks, was the end of Iron Fist, issue number one. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly means the world to me. And as always, I'm your majestic sayer of words, Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button. And also hit the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload. And so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number two? Let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace.